So we are going to discuss segments and circles. I have three types of segments shown below, which also have their formulas. The first one we're gonna talk about is intersecting chords. Recall that a chord is basically a segment that goes from one end point of the circle on the edge of the circle to the other. So what I just highlighted is considered a chord. And we're gonna take that chord and we're gonna take part by part and multiply it together. So as you can see, I have A and then I have a B. And then below you see the formula that tells me to multiply A times B. So that's what's gonna happen on one side. And then I go to the other chord and I do the exact same thing. So this part of the chord times the other part of the chord will make up the other side of my equation and my formula. So that's what you would use. That's the formula you would use when you have two intersecting chords. The next one is when you have a secant and a tangent. So you may have to go back to a previous video where I discussed the chord secant and tangent so that you'll know parts of a circle. The secant is the one that goes through the circle and the secant is going to be always represented by the formula outside times whole. Well, what does that mean? That means the actual secant or segment that I'm looking at, which is a secant, what part of it is outside of the circle? So this is the outside. So that's what this part of the formula represents, the outside. Well, the confusing part for some people is the whole part. The whole means the entire secant. And once we get down to the actual work, you'll see what I'm referring to. And then the other, um, the other segment that you see is called a tangent. And that's where it touches at exactly one point on the edge of the circle. And whenever you see tangent with the secant, it's represented by outside, which you see it's already outside. And you're gonna square whatever that information is. And then the next um, illustration is two secants. So again, I have a secant going through a circle here, and I also have a secant going through the circle there. So they're both still represented by this formula that I just went over a few minutes ago. Outside times whole is still equal to another outside times whole. So that's what it means when you have two secants. You have to understand the difference between a chord, a secant, and a tangent in order to know which formula to use. So we're going to go ahead and start with example one which is two chords or two intersecting chords. So if I am trying to solve this problem, it does not matter which chord I choose first. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and, well, let's, we're gonna work with this chord first. So I'm gonna break it into two parts, just like the formula tells me to. Instead of using A times B, I'm going to use the points that are shown here. So I'm going to say ET times, and then TG. So that is one part of this, the chord times the other part of the chord. Okay, and then I'm going to set that equal to, I'm just gonna use the other one and do the exact same thing. It does not matter which number that I put first, but I'm just gonna go ahead and go from top to bottom. So I'm gonna go from FT times TH. Once I do this, I can literally just substitute everything in. Once I substitute everything in, I just complete my math. ET is represented by A, TG is X minus one, FT is six, and then TH is X plus two. So now you just wanna distribute what's on the outside of the parentheses to everything that's inside of the parentheses until you end up with eight X minus eight is equal to six X plus 12. Now you want to subtract 6x on both sides. And you can go ahead and add 8 in the same step on both sides. What do you do to what you do to one side, you do to the other. And so now once you simplify, you're left with 2x is equal to 20. Divide both sides by 2 and x becomes 10. My directions ask me to find th. So I will go back to my problem and I will look for TH. Well, this is TH. So TH is represented by X plus two. Well, we know X is no longer X, it is actually 10. 
So 10 plus two, which means that TH actually is 12. That's my final answer. For the next one, if I'm looking at what's given here, I see that I have a secant, which is the one that goes through the circle. And I also have a tangent where it stops at one point on the edge of the circle. So I'm just gonna follow my formula and it does not matter which one I use first. I just happen to set up my secant first. So that's what we're gonna go with. The outside of my secant is represented by the number 12. So that's what I'm going to write for the outside portion. And this is where I was saying it's tricky. The whole part means this is not, most students will try to multiply this. This is a segment addition postulate, which means that if I were to break this up, this part of a segment plus this part, notice I said plus, equals the entire part. That's segment addition postulate. So what I would do so that I won't forget is write a plus sign here. That's what I would do. So when it says whole, I'm going to take all of it, 12, and then I'm going to add it to that 2x plus 3. And then on the other side is asking for the outside of my tangent, which the formula tells me that I'm going to square it. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take 18 and I'm going to square it. So it does not hurt to just go ahead and write down your formula because that will help you. You know what, let me put the X first. I wanna go ahead and put it in standard form. So I'm gonna do the two X and then I'm going to add the 12 plus three since they're like terms, which is 15. And 18 squared is 324. Now, when I distribute this 12 that's on the outside to everything that's inside of the parentheses, I am left with, <clears throat> 24x is equal to 12 times 15, which is not equal, sorry, that's a plus sign there. 24x plus 180, which is 12 times 15, is equal to 324. I am going to subtract 180 on both sides because I'm trying to get x by itself. And I end up with 24x is equal to 324 minus 180 is 144. Divide both sides by 24 and I end up with six. But my directions ask me to find LM. Pay attention to the directions. So LM is, let's go to our um, problem. And I see that LM is this portion, which is represented by two X plus three. So that's what we're working with. But instead of the X, I'm going to replace it with what I just said x was, which is six plus three. And so therefore, when I simplify, lm is 12 plus three, which is 15. So that's the answer to that problem. And then finally, for example three, we have another situation, but this time it's two secants. And again, you can barely see it, but that one actually goes through the, the circle, <clears throat> don't get it confused with a tangent. It looks similar to a tangent, but it's not. And that one goes through the circle. It does not matter which one you start with. I'm gonna go ahead and start with the top. The top says the outside is seven. So that's what we're gonna write. Um, seven times the whole. Remember I said the whole means you're adding. So again, if you want to just go ahead and put a plus sign there so you don't forget. So I'm gonna take this number again. So I should see this number twice. So seven plus, and then what's the other portion of my, what's shown on that secant? It's going to be the two plus three X. Now, if I go to my other side of my secant, I see that I have a nine. So I'm going to write for the outside is nine. Again, I should see that number twice because the whole means the whole line this time. Um, <clears throat> so that's going to be nine plus, well, this time I only have a five there, this part. Okay, and now I just simplify what I have. Seven times, well, seven plus two is nine plus three X is equal to, and then here, instead of distributing nine plus five is simply 14. So go ahead and combine your like terms. 
Now you want to distribute on this side, which brings us to 63 plus 21 X is equal to 14 times nine, which is 126. And then I'm going to subtract 63 on both sides so that I can get X by itself, which results in 21 X is equal to, that's still 63, divide both sides by 21, X is three, but my directions asked me to find CE. So again, I gotta pay attention, CE is the entire um, secant. So we want to make sure that we account for that. So CE equals the two plus three. Well, instead of X, we're going to use what we just found, which was another three. And then we're gonna add that to the outside because that's part of the whole secant, seven. And once we simplify, we see that CE is equal to two plus nine plus seven, because this is multiplying, not adding. And then finally, CE is equal to 18. All right, hope this was helpful. If you were able to get gain something out of this, please subscribe. Thank you.